Welcome to video 19 on fun with Arduino. It's time to try detect our train and for that on this video at least we're going to use an optical sensor. While working on train detection sensors we might as well already have a bit of fun with them. Here are two sensors left and right. I have a car and I'm going to do a speed measurement. Here I come. Yeah, sensor detected. I try to run approximately 30. Yeah, sensor detected. I went 28.45. Well, that was close. This is the fun we are going to have. There are actually a couple of ways in which we can do train detection. And the only reason I chose optical for this demo is that I had a couple of these sensors lying around and they were quite easy to create a demo setup with. So that's actually the only reason. Uh, probably on an uh, automated railway layout you would use rail current detection or my personal favorite read switches and magnets. It's my favorite because it's by far the simplest method. This is the TCRT5000 sensor. It works by virtue of reflection. Here is a infrared transmitter and a receiver on the same side. And if it finds a reflective surf surface like my finger, uh, we can see on the green LED that it detected that. There is a potentiometer on it with which we can uh, tune the sensitivity. Uh, I, I usually do it this way that I rotate it such that uh, the green light goes on without looking at anything. That is right now. And then uh, I look at the surface that I like to detect and then rotate back till the green line goes off. And then uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, yeah, th that seems to be a perfect uh, tuning point. Um, the question of course it is can it detect this car? Well, I know already that I have to tune it a little bit more sensitive because of that dark grey green color. But yes, it will detect this car. Uh, if I write uh, towards it we can see the green LED light up. So this is reliable enough for our uh, purposes. Let's uh, build it on a pedestal and do a, a speed measurement with it. To try out the sensors, this is a very tiny code. We define two sensor pins and make them an input pull-up. And then the only thing we do is check if we see a sensor and if we do, we print it. Well, let me let me upload this and at the same time start a video. And then we can see if these sensors come in. Uh, we can see here on the video that the way that I mounted these sensors is of course totally unacceptable for any model railway layout. But it is just a simple way of letting them point towards the car. Um, another way of doing it is just to cut off your uh, a transmitter and your receiver and place them opposite of each other alongside the track and they are small enough to be easily hidden in a, a small yeah, uh, switch box uh, along the road or a, a bush or whatever and your electronics can be further away uh, and then uh, there is a benefit that it also is now a beam interrupt sensor instead of a reflection sensor. And the benefit of that is it is a little bit more reliable and also less susceptible to environment light. So this may be a, a, a nice way to do it, to have your uh, transmitter and receiver cut off. Well, let's try it out. Uh, the uh, serial monitor is running. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I detect a car, the serial monitor also detects a car. So that seems to be working well. This is uh, a nice starting point for our speed measurement uh, device, which we're going to build just for fun. 
we are going to make some code for a speed measurement device which normally is idle and waiting for sensor 1 if sensor 1 is seen it starts the timer waiting for sensor 2 it stops the timer calculates the speed and shows it of course and then we are idle again okay let's make the framework first we have a switch state uh, state 1 all we do is test for a sensor 1 pin to become low and if it does we jump to transition 1 2 in transition 1 2 we start the measurement uh, that code will follow in a minute uh, and of course then we jump to state 2 in state 2 all that we do is check for sensor 2 to become low and if it does we jump to transition 2 1 and in transition 2 1 what we do there is add in a minute the code to calculate and print and then we jump back to state 1 so this is the framework let's now fill it up a bit more with the total code let's add some things to the state transition diagram to make it a workable code two sensor pins are defined and of course we have also the distance between the sensors we need that to calculate the speed and we simply measure it with a tape ruler with uh, let's say a millimeter accuracy then we have the two uh, variables state and transition state starts at one we have the start a milliseconds uh, when we start the measurement and then at the end we have the measured milliseconds and then we do some calculation uh, in the code later on we want to calculate um, the speed in millimeter per second yeah or meter per second that doesn't matter and we want to represent that uh, with values behind the comma like 24.73 and to do that we declare this as a floating point variable and then all of that is taken care of fully automatically in setup we of course create our two inputs for the sensors and we start also the serial monitor then in the loop the state uh, switch state stays exactly as it was but in the transitions we are going to add a couple of activities uh, when we start the measurement yeah of course uh, we do that by storing the current time in the variable start milliseconds and then we start to wait for the second sensor to become active and then if it does the first thing we do is the measured milliseconds is the current clock minus the previous start milliseconds and then we do some printing and then there is this calculation millimeter per second is the floating point distance times 1000 divided by measured milliseconds why is that times 1000 well because it is millimeter per second and the measurement was in millisecond so somewhere we have to multiply by 1000 and then one more calculation to do the most complex of them but uh, it's best maybe to figure it out for yourself that it really works how to go from millimeter per second to a kilometer per hour with a scale factor in my case of HO which is where this 87 comes in uh, because that is the scale factor for an HO scale if you have another uh, scale then of course you fill in another number over here this is all the mathematics and all the printing and uh, so there's no more code to go let's upload this and see what happens okay software uploaded here I come again with the car let's do a fast run yeah that was uh, quite fast how fast 117 and something and let's do a slow run 
uh, maybe I can try to find the speed of let's say 20 should be something like this I don't know yeah 21 well that sounds good um, well this yeah it's working we are detecting the train reliably and we can calculate its speed and we could even make a permanent uh, stand for this alongside our track um, maybe that will become a future video with maybe an LCD screen on or an OLED screen we'll see uh, everything is ready now uh, we have our blinking lights we have a servo motor for the gate and we have reliable sensors in the next video we are going to put it all together to make a complete railway crossing see you back there bye bye